Hi everyone, Dr. Selena Sufraz, Dental Sage here. So I'm actually talking today about my SIBO journey. So SIBO is a type of a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And many people with IBS symptoms have SIBO and only they don't know they have SIBO. So the symptoms of SIBO are things like bloating, um, sometimes it's constipation, sometimes it's diarrhea, stomach pain, and it can lead to hours and hours of miserable pain um, and pain relief is not possible. But I'm gonna tell you my 10 top tips so far. I started this journey in April 21 when I had severe symptoms of stomach um, pain, really severe pain. I couldn't keep painkillers down. I had repetitive vomiting and diarrhea and it went on, lasted for about seven or eight hours. And this kept repeating throughout the next 10 days, every few days. I couldn't work out what was triggering it. I didn't know what had happened. I thought I'd been food poisoned, but I cooked the food at home and other people had eaten. So I didn't, I couldn't quite work it out. I then spent the next almost a year going through investigations with gastroenterologists privately. So I had an endoscopy, a gastroscopy through into my stomach. I had a colonoscopy up the other end. I had biopsies, my liver was scanned, my abdomen was scanned. I had um, MRI, a CT scan, that's it. I also had went to see a specialist in pancreas and hepatic and biliary. So that's um, to look at my pancreatic function and my bile duct emptying. I had uh, MRI for that. I had a CCAT scan, which was in a radioactive capsule that you take and you go back a week later and have another scan. So I had all of these things done and everything showed up fine. So the gastroenterologist basically said to me, well, it's functional, you know, see how you go. It looks like you're doing well, sort of keeping away from chickpeas and things. But then it kept coming back. So I asked to see a dietitian. She put me on uh, an anti-inflammatory diet. She sent me for SIBO testing, which is where you blow into little test tubes. And that's where I kind of at. I then went to see another gastroenterologist who put me on some antibiotics called rifaximin. And then it sort of came back again. And then I went to see a functional doctor. Uh, I'm on rifaximin again at the moment. So this started April 21. It is now October 22. In the last month, I've had to go home early from work with severe pain. I've had to abandon a cookery course in the middle of it because of severe pain. And the last sort of 10 days, I've kind of been okay because I've been really, really careful about what I'm doing. And so therefore I want to share this with you. Find a sympathetic practitioner, preferably one that can prescribe and a nutritionist who work together. Um, it's not always possible to find them private. It's not always possible to find them on the NHS. So April 22, I was referred on the NHS. Nobody's seen me. Um, it's October 22. I got a letter from them in September, six months later, offering me some antibiotics based on the letter that they had from my GP. So nobody's actually seen me. Different health authorities, different National Health Trust will work differently. But the most important thing is find a sympathetic practitioner who can prescribe after you've had all the routine investigations. So that might be private, it might be NHS, and you can get recommendations. I joined a Facebook group called UK SIBO, a support group, and they had lots of help. I'm actually seeing somebody now at Mosaic Medical and who are offering online consultations. I don't get paid for any of these recommendations. I'm just telling you what I've done. Number two, get tested for SIBO. Don't let any practitioner tell you, I think you've got SIBO without actually having a test. You need the evidence to show that the bacteria in your small intestine are reacting to the foods that you're eating. So you get to drink a solution of glucose or lactulose. Then you have 10 test tubes and you blow into the test tubes every 10 minutes, I think it is, over a two and a half, three hour period. You seal them, you send them back to the laboratory 
and then they will test and they're looking for hydrogen and methane levels rising, which is a byproduct of the bacteria using and eating the glucose or lactulose that you've drunk. Um, you have to follow a white food diet the day before. So that's white bread, white rice, white pasta with nothing else. And to be honest, that's fine because most of the time I'm having to be gluten free. So it was a real treat to be able to have white bread. I loved it. White bread, white toast um, and the inside of a baked potato. No problem. Um, when you get tested for SIBO, you might have to pay privately and it's in the range of 250 to 350 pounds, depending on who you go with. And or you might get it done through the NHS and the NHS will take about six weeks at least to get a test organised for you. Top tip number three, educate yourself on SIBO. The There is a lot of people talking about SIBO on YouTube, like myself, I'm not, you know, the the, I don't have all the training on it, but I've done a huge amount of reading, listening to podcasts, reading evidence-based publications. I'm a dentist, so when I go to look at a medication or treatment for something that's medical, I will look at the evidence behind it. What has somebody done? Who has done the research? What is the evidence to show that this works? Rather than it's someone's opinion or someone's personal experience. Personal experience is helpful, but evidence is more powerful because you normally have a large sample size and the clinician who's done the research has found out that it works in a significant amount of people to make the whatever the hypothesis is that they're testing. So whether it's an antibiotic or a treatment to make it more compelling that it's actually working. So Mark Pimentel at the Cedar sinai Hospital in the USA is the leading researcher and his team at uh, Cedar sinai So I look at all his research. He also works in close conjunction with Alison Seebecker. Alison Seebecker, I think she's a nutritionist um, or a naturopath or both, but she has got some amazing protocols. In the beginning, my GP prescribed me three months worth of Dyrolite, three months worth of anti-sickness tablets, three months worth of um, um, Imodium. Now I walk around with activated charcoal in case I get bloating, in case I get pain. I'm using things that are more natural. Um, and Alison Seebecker has a wonderful website which has protocols for diets, protocols for pain relief, protocols for um, constipation relief, protocols for diarrhea relief. So I'd, I'd highly recommend that and all that she recommends has been evident, it's evidence backed. And then the other person I'd recommend to look at is Shivan Sana. She runs a um, website called SIBO SOS and she works again often with many leading gastroenterologists and clinicians and dietitians and nutritionists. Sometimes her the stuff she does, if you sign up, you can get free access. So I think I spent one whole Sunday watching maybe seven hours worth of videos and I took notes and this is where my knowledge has grown. So you can pay to have those and you can access them whenever you want. Or if you're lucky, you happen to be free when she does one of her freebies and you can watch um, all the interviews. Top tip number four, do your healing journey on your gut. It's an inflammatory thing. This may take time. You may have to give up alcohol. You may have to give up sugar. You may have to give up histamines. You may have to have um, histamine enzymes or food enzymes. Um, but do with it and commit to it with your nutritionist so that you're doing it properly. Don't assume your practitioner knows everything. Um, food triggers, number five, food triggers are not necessarily what you ate on the day. Severe pain, an acute episode, that might happen because the food trigger was on the Tuesday and things you didn't follow, go back and reset and go and have a sort of anti-inflammatory plain diet for a few days and you just jumped in and went back to eat something normally that doesn't trigger you and it triggered you. This happened to me just a couple of weeks ago, so I'm still learning. Um, top tip number six, do a three day stool test with your practitioner if you can. It was really interesting. It showed me that I didn't have any parasites and it also showed me certain commensal bacteria. So commensal are, means bacteria that live normally within your gut. And it could be bacteria or could be fungi. We all have candida living quite normally from the mouth all the way through to the bottom. If you have a, um, a proliferation 
of commensal bacteria or fungi, that could also be giving a skewed result. So it's important to get these stool tests done so you know exactly what it is in there. I delayed doing this for a long time because I was trying to find research to find out if it was beneficial. Eventually, um, my doctor at um, Mosaic Medical recommended I do it. I'm glad I did because it ruled out a few things that I thought could be causing this. I had Campylobacter over 25 years ago and you know the, my gut has never been good. I've always been the one to get ill or to react to spicy food, so it's no nothing new. Number seven, uh, drug box. Um, this was really useful when I ended up on so many supplements. I bought this from Amazon and it's really useful. So I thought it would be good for holiday. I took it on holiday, but in fact, now I use it every day. So I take this to work with me. So it's got all the supplements that I need before breakfast, before lunch, before dinner. And then this is my emergency activated charcoal. If I end up with bloating or pain, I'll take that. Um, two capsules of activated charcoal because to be honest I'm on this 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 I have this to take away as capsules when I'm not putting it in my breakfast and at the end of the night I'm on this so lots and lots of supplements um so I spend one five minutes a week getting this all ready and then I'm good to go during the week when I'm busy with my work top tip number eight food prep i do overnight oats with many different things in there chia seeds you need to over soak them to get the mucin which helps with your gut lining milled flaxseed oat bran psyllium husk walnuts oats and blueberries what i do i haven't got anything to show you but i put them all in a small tupperware with a lid i dish them all out i do it for the whole week i do it on the weekend and then in during the week i just take it out before i go to bed pop it in a bowl put some milk in almond milk and then let it soak overnight so my breakfast is never rushed um number nine be strict be strict about eating slowly be strict about sitting down to eat be strict about not eating on the run be strict about chewing your food 20 times be strict about timing between meals there's something called the migrating motor complex which is where your gut cleanses in between meals and if you are snacking or you're eating less than four hours between meals, this does not happen. And therefore, you cannot get the benefit that your gut needs to rest between meals. So don't eat between meals and leave four hours. I often put a timer on. And the other thing to be strict about is don't take supplements within an hour or two of having caffeine. So I'm very strict about this now because... These supplements cost a lot of money and what's the point of it if you're going to have caffeine and not get all the benefit and be able to absorb it? Tip, tip number 10, be strong, be positive. There's a lot of us out there. Join some of the groups. Facebook UK SIBO has been really, really helpful to me. There's a lot of uh, positive energy and when you're down, it's also nice to be able to reach out and talk to people who understand what you're going through. Be strong about the foods you eat read the labels. Don't just put stuff in your mouth without checking what's in it. I've done it so many times. Be strong when a lovely dessert comes in front of you and the waiter tells you don't eat it and you eat it like I did. And then I ended up with eight hours of pain and vomiting and diarrhea. Um, be strong to say no to foods that people offer you. I now cook and carry food with me when I go away for a weekend. Um, I take nuts with me. I take rice cakes with me. I take sesame snaps because I can eat glucose, but not fructose. Um, I take peanuts that are covered in sugary stuff for a little kick of sugar rather than honey because honey has a lot of fructose. So be strong, be organised and be positive. If you liked this, please subscribe for more content. If you like this, please give me a heart in the comment. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. All right, take care, bye.